working on their major. So we'll begin with an introduction to One Pace Plaza, which is the main building, and we'll begin here. Right now we are standing in our newly renovated student spaces. They were fit, the renovation was complete about a year and a half ago. So us students have been enjoying them for just a small amount of time so far. Right behind us right now is our welcome center. It has floor to ceiling windows. It's my personal favorite spot on campus. This is where you would normally come and have your uh, tour. But right now, since everything that is going on, you are seeing us virtually. We are here on campus. Uh, and now we can put over to the student school. Right over here is the spirit store. This is where you can get all of your Pace goodies, ranging from sweatshirts to sweatpants to anything that you want that says Pace on it. You can find it right here. And it's located right in the front of the campus, so you'll never miss it on your way in and out. Us tour guides are here at least one time per shift grabbing a new sweatshirt. And once one tour guide has a new sweatshirt, the rest of us have it about an hour later. Uh, so that's one of our favorite spots on campus. Right here is our security desk. You'll hear about security in, during the tour in just a little bit, so bear with us. But remember this spot right here. Along with that, we are going to head into the student center. This is our student center on campus. Right now, it is set up to be a socially distant classroom. But normally, when there isn't tables and chairs in here, this space is used by our wonderful clubs and organizations on campus for many, many different events, ranging from painting nights to winter carnivals. It's where us tour guides like to come and get free food when there's events going on. So you can also take advantage of that as a pay student as well, and it's a great way to get involved. So this is one of our great spaces on campus. I personally love the floor to ceiling windows that look out onto Spruce Street. So even when you're here on campus, you can get a view of what's going on in the city around us. Along with that, I love to study in this room. It's usually, it's typically very quiet, and you can always see what's going on. So we can now head out, and I'll show you another space. This space right here is actually quite lively right now. We have some freshmen hanging out who just moved on to campus somewhere. Uh, along with that, as you can see, students can sit and enjoy these spaces singularly or together as a group, whether they're studying or just moving out. This long black tabling hub right here is exactly what it sounds like, a tabling hub. It's where different clubs and organizations can sit and do tabling, meaning when you're walking in and out of campus, it's easy access to sign up for a club or sign up to a, for an event, which is a great way to get involved. Personally, when there isn't clubs doing tabling here, I like to sit here and work on my studies. It's right across from the Welcome Center, so I am a little biased for my favorite study, study spot on campus. And each of the little uh, chairs over here has its own outlet. So while I'm sitting there, if my computer ever dies, I always have an outlet right next to me. So you can follow me. We'll see another two different Right behind me is our Zanino conference room. It is a fully equipped conference room here on campus. And us students use them for different classes or clubs and uh, event organization organization events uh, where we're bringing in different guests or we're Zooming in different guests. And by the end of this, we are all going to be pros at Zooming people into conferences. So possibly you'll end up right here in the Zenino conference room doing so one day. You can follow me this way. This is another one of my favorite study spots on campus. You can see these futuristic looking chairs. They're actually soundproof chairs. So if you are someone who requires a little bit of silence to study, but you still want to be around everything that's going on on campus, this is a great spot for you. Over here, there are some booths. So if you ever wanted to sit with the group and hang out and do some studying, this is where you can do them. And you might be able to see the stickers on the different couches as abiding by our social distancing rules. So we don't have too many people packed into these booths hanging out or working on some studies. Okay, so we had a really good glimpse at these new spaces that are open to our students this year. And as you can see, it, the focus is on making space available to students. We live in New York City. We know that it can be a little bit 
crowded. So when we walk into campus, we want to make sure students have spaces to set up, places to study at a minute's notice, places to meet with their clubs. And that's exactly what happened with these newly renovate, renovated places. So students have been loving them. Um, it's been painful to be away during this COVID time, but we're so excited to be back on campus this semester. So what we saw was truly a good glimpse of that. You also got to see the security desk, which is like command central at the front. And those security guards are actually trained by NYPD personnel. So they don't let anyone on campus who shouldn't be. And students are encouraged to keep their IDs up to date. OK, and now we're remaining in the same building, which is One Pace Plaza. Hey guys, my name is Sarah. I am a senior arts and entertainment management major. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm originally from Rochester, New York. Today, you are seeing us on our fourth floor at the Lubin School of Business, my home as an arts and entertainment management major. So right behind me, we have our faculty offices through the double doors. Here is a great place to visit any of your professors during your office hours. During office hours, I like to visit my professor, Chris Ramos, who's also the head of our Arts and Entertainment Management program. And we love to sit down, talk about the industry, and also he loves setting our students up with different internship opportunities through his connections. So as we walk over this way, we'll also talk a little bit about our career-focused clubs. So we have a lot of different clubs and organizations here on campus, but we have specific ones that are focused within the business school. So I myself am a part of the Industry Network, which is our Arts and Entertainment Management Club. They're really great in bringing in different guest organizations, such as Viacom CBS, NBC Universal, Disney, and a lot of the times the recruiters recruit us right on the spot as PACE students. There's also a lot of other clubs within marketing, finance, accounting, and if you don't see a business club you want to join, you can always create your own. So as we walk down the hallway, this is, again, our fourth floor. We have our great sign here de deeming the Lubin School of Business. And then we'll walk over here to our GPAP room or our Global, Portfol Global Portfolio Analysis Center. Definitely a mouthful there. So within this room, we have our relatively up-to-date stock ticker. We are even more relatively up-to-date than the one in Times Square because of our close proximity to Wall Street. We also have terminals in here, the ones with the colorful keyboards, if you can take a look. And in there, that means those terminals are equipped with Bloomberg technology. Bloomberg technology is the simulation of the buying, selling, and trading of stocks within the stock market. You can actually take an 8 to 10 hour course here at Lubin School of Business and get certified within our Bloomberg technology, which looks great on your resume. So that is it for our Lubin School of Business floor. I'm going to pass it over to our tour guide, Brooke, to talk about the science wing. Okay, so as Sarah walked us through, the number of specific clubs is quite large. And these clubs are not just for students to get together and talk about their major, but they also invite large companies to come and speak to them too. And these are all open to international students, as well as the job fairs and the international centric job fairs too. So all that's been said so far applies to students who are coming from outside the US and I encourage you to share that good news. Okay, and now we are still in the same building, One Pace Plaza. As you can see from our initial photo, it's quite a large building and it packs a lot. And we're now focusing on the science labs. Hi hey everyone, my name is Brooke. I'm a rising senior here at Pace on the New York City campus. I'm a double major pursuing English and communications with a minor in journalism. I am also part of a five-year master's program in publishing, so I get to graduate with my master's in five years, which is saving me a year of time and money, always a good thing. I'm originally from Long Island, New York, but now live right here in the financial, financial district, so I have a nice short commute to Pace. But you were just on the fourth floor viewing the Lupin School of Business. Now we're going to virtually walk down a flight of stairs, and here we are on the third floor, and I'm going to take you through our science wing. So this is our Alfred Goldstein Laboratories. So we're going to walk on in into the science wing here and take a look. You'll notice the social distancing guidelines on the floor here, and that's all throughout our campus. So safety is, of course, our top priority. Something to note about our science wing is similar to the rest of our campus, it is newly renovated. So that includes 25 plus newly renovated bio and chem labs. We have brand new top notch equipment in these labs too. We have a brand new 3D printer, which our science students are really excited about. We have 
all new equipment ready and available for you. So that includes your lab coats, your goggles, all that fun stuff. So something I like to note about our science department here at Pace is that no matter what major you are, you still get to take a science course some, at some point during your Pace path. So every major gets to experience the science department. So you'll be here again at some point during your Pace career. So that means you could take any science course anywhere from oceanography, like I just did, to biology, to physics, to forensic science, whatever it might be. A really popular science course we have here at Pace is the forensic science course. It's like a CSI investigative type of class, so you really get to interact and engage with the material in the course, and you kind of get to solve the problem like a CSI case would be. So that's a really popular one and something that you might consider taking as a Pace student. So let's continue walking along the way here. A lot of times science students ask me how traditional internships might look for them if they look a little different and kind of how an internship translates for a science student. And I say that it does in terms of research. So let's take a look over here. At Pace, science students have the opportunity to conduct research with our Pace faculty. If that research goes ahead and gets published and the student did a substantial amount of work on the research, their name could be produced on it as well. So you'll notice there are a variety of names here and some include Pace University, some include PhD, and some don't. Some of these names are actually Pace students or former Pace students. So by the time you graduate, you could be on a published work of research, which is a great thing for your resume and is great experience in your field. So as we're going to walk along here, you'll notice that there's a lot of posters hanging on the wall, and that's all of our published research with our students' names on it. We'll take another pause here. You'll notice that there are a bunch of offices here as well. I like to say that the science wing is your one-stop shop as a science student. Professors are required to have office hours at Pace, and that, of course, includes your science professors. So whether that be in person or over Zoom, over email, professors build hours in their week to take time and meet with their students. So as a science student, you could go to your lab, you could go to your study space, and then you can come right to your professor's office if you'd like to schedule a meeting. So everything you need is right here. Now let's take a look at what a lab might look like. We can't go in because we're not properly dressed with our lab coats, but we can take a peek through the window. You can see right here, this is one of our newly renovated bio labs. We'll walk this way and take a look at another one. Here's another newly renovated bio lab. I got to see the 3D printer last semester when I gave a science tour. And let me tell you, it was so cool. I wish I could use it and I wish I knew how to use it. It makes me want to take another science course. But we're going to walk on out this way. And again, you'll just see some more research on the walls. You'll see some study spaces and professor offices. So that's a wrap for our science wing. Thanks so much for taking a look. So what Brooke has walked us through very quickly, might I add, is really the, the combination of staff and student spaces. So students are never um, exploring or studying or kind of researching alone. They always have the support of the staff. And that was the same at Lubin as well, the same as Dyson, and is the same for Seidenberg. The staff are not removed and they're fully involved in the students' um, experience on campus as well as their academic studies. Um, and that's why we're so lucky as a private university that our numbers are only 14 students to every one professor. So in that classroom, you're never crowded. You're able to have your time with a professor and learn effectively. Okay. And then on to one of the most important questions, of course, that every student and, you know, every staff member has when they're on pace is where shall I eat? And that is right here at Cafe 101. Students pay for meal plans and these meal plans are loaded up on their ID card. So it's one ID card they use to get into the building, they use to get their meals. And they load it up as a dollar amount and they pay for the price of the item rather than a swipe. So even if you have a student who is largely sustaining themselves on snacks, then they can just buy, you know, one or two dollars worth of, of food and they don't lose a whole like breakfast, lunch or dinner swipe on a snack. Um, if you don't finish your meal plans in one semester, it rolls over to the next. And there's also, which I will let um, the young man here talk about more, but there is a Starbucks inside. Um, and the cafeteria tends to be open from about six in the morning till really late in the evening and even later during finals so that students who are on campus at any hour um, or studying in the library till late can still get something to eat. Another feature of our uh, cafeteria that all of our students love is our fully functioning Starbucks. And I say fully functioning because you can find all the same menu items at this Starbucks as any other off-campus Starbucks. So all the same drinks, snacks, as well as New York City themed mugs, which is super cool. And I'm sure you're all wondering, how do I pay for all this delicious food? 
So in order to do that, you take out your PACE ID card and you hand it to the cashier and they swipe it. And you're paying for the price of your food rather than the number of meals. Our meal plan is on a declining debit system, which I really love because for me personally, I'm a big snacker. I love the chips and cookies. Um, so I'm relieved to know that I'm not going to lose a number of meal um, allotted for my system. And I'm just going to be paying for like the price of whatever I'm getting. We also have a feature of our PACE meal plan called Flex Dollars, which can be used at off-campus locations. Those include Rosella's, a pizza place, um, Chipotle, which is where most of my Flex money went, even CVS. And you can use us at a bunch of other off-campus locations also. They'll say it like on the outside of the restaurant, um, and a lot of them in Baidai have them down here. And your meal plan also works up down at the Wall Mall, which Tori had pointed out earlier in this tour. We also have some incredible events that happen in the cafeteria. There's been a farmer's market, cooking classes. My personal favorite, though, has been midnight breakfast. This happens at the end of each semester. It's hosted by the RAs, and it's just a celebration of everything that happened. Everyone gathers. We all have pancakes and waffles at midnight, and they all taste so much better at that time. And there's, like, singing and dancing and karaoke. It's a really amazing time. But right now, I'm going to walk you through the space, and I'm going to show you some of the social distancing guidelines that we have set in place for this next year. So you can follow me this way. So over here, we have our area as well as the cash registers where you can check out and this year we have a line just to make sure that no one is bumping into each other in the kitchen and making sure that we are all staying socially distant and then if you would like to follow me this way you can see we have some markings on the floor that direct students where to go to direct traffic patterns bump into the wire. <laughs> and then this way we have a lovely starbucks that i was telling you all about before and some more line markings on the floor Okay, so, this so as you can see, the Starbucks is part of the cafeteria, and the cafeteria, which was a little bit emptier right now, has these safety guidelines set up. So behind the young man here on the right-hand side is actually where students can pick up their meals if they don't want to choose their meal in the cafeteria, but this is just half of the space. On the other side is um, the pizza and the sushi and the hot bar, um, so there are varieties galore and students they might miss their home cooking but they will definitely get a vast majority of options when they are on campus um, so what we're going to go to next is the shimmel center which is on campus it's um, adjoined to one pace plaza so next to the building that we have been seeing so far Welcome to the Schimmel Center Theater here on Pace's campus. This is our 650 seat auditorium, which houses four of our main stage productions in the Pace School of Performing Arts every year. A fall and spring dance concert and a musical and a play that switch from fall to spring year to year. Now the Schimmel Entity does their own curated offering of shows in this space every year, from concert bands and orchestras to comedians and singers and even movie screenings. I was lucky my freshman year to see a movie screening of Little Shop of Horrors, and the director, Frank Oz, came out on stage after the screening for a talkback, and that was pretty cool. Some other cool things that happen in this space are that inside the Actors Studio, a great TV show used to be filmed exclusively on the Schimmel Theater stage. Guests like Tina Fey, Al Pacino, and the cast of How I Met Your Mother have been on that stage, and that's a really great perk of being a Pace University student. Now the show films all around Manhattan, uptown, downtown, midtown, all over the place. But since our initial connection with the Schimmel Theater, Pace students often get free or discounted tickets to see tapings of Inside the Actors Studio all the time. Now back to Pace's relationship with the Schimmel Theater. The Pace Board, one of our great student organizations on campus, holds a number of events inside of the Schimmel Theater every year, right there on that stage, including Amateur Night, Think America's Got Talent, Pace Edition, where you could sing, dance, or do a comedy routine and compete for cash prizes and even compete in front of celebrity judges. And we also have Pace Idol, where one of our tour guides actually won the whole competition this year. Super cool plug for the Pace University Welcome Center. And finally, the Schimmel Theater is a union house, which means that all actors and technicians who work in this space abide by union rules, and the student actors and technicians get really great professional early exposure to being a part of the okay, industry. Okay, wonderful. So that just gives you a glimpse into the Schimmel Center. And now before we have to wrap it up, um, we'll finally get to see where our students will live. Closure. I'm here today in the lovely Financial District, New York City, here we are, where Pace NYC calls its campus its home, and 30th and Beekman, the tallest residence hall in the world and predominantly upperclassmen, not just to show you my amazing interior design skills and my iconic Pace University themed bed, which is very renowned here on campus. 
I mean, come on, look at those yellow pillows. But to share with you all how similar 30 Feet Beekman is to all the other residence halls here on Pace campus. So I'm gonna flip my camera a bit. I'm gonna show you all the view. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show you it yet. I'm gonna hide it from you because it's the best, save the best for last. But anyway, everything you see that is brown is furniture. I know you all know it's furniture, but that is included within the room when you live here on campus. And it's amazing that Pace gives you the furniture. I know, very Pace. Yes, we love it. Because you don't want to be lugging like a huge desk or wardrobe with you all the way to NYC. It's just crazy. Pace accommodates for their students. We also have the lovely addition of the micro fridge. And 30D Beekman is apartment style, just like 182 Broadway, and was a huge inspiration towards why I chose to live in 30D Beekman, because I love the apartment style feel. So this is where my bathroom is. And when you live on Pace's campus, you are guaranteed a beautiful view of the financial district neighborhood. Okay, brace yourselves. I was hiding this from you all, but here we are. Come on, people. What? Look at this. This what Pace Plaza, that's the main building, and those are the two bridges. I mean, I feel like I'm on million dollar listing uh, New York City from Bravo. It's crazy. And this is where the main tour is happening right now. So those are where all my friends are. But anyway, I can talk about myself forever and this beautiful room and how much I love Pace NYC and 33 Beekman and, you know, all the residence halls here. But I'm going to Okay, so that was a glimpse of the beautiful view in addition to the bed and where everyone will be staying. Um, and that brings us to the end of our campus tour. Um, so Sorry. if there are any questions about that very quick tour that we just took of New York City, um, please let us know. Yes. I'll be happy to answer them. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Vivian. I hope everyone was able just to enjoy the campus tour, to see how strong and beautiful the university is with all the amazing facilities it has. I want to thank all of you for participation, and we have a few questions in the Q&A section. Um, can you have a college experience in this non-traditional campus? Yes, definitely. This is an experience for a student who is looking to expand their career at the same time that they are building on their academic profile. Um, there are gyms on campus that we didn't see, um, but they have concerts, they have intramural sports, there are clubs, activities, fraternities, and definitely an opportunity to get involved on campus whilst you're making the most of the city around you. Amazing, thank you. Um, as we have a few minutes left, um, just one more question. Uh, Vivian, how safe the university is? The university is located in the city itself. So we're not on the outskirts of, of any borough. Um, and because of the training that our security guards get, it is exceptionally safe. Um, we also have a Pace Safe app to even keep students away if the weather is bad. So the number one priority is the students' well-being and success while on campus. Um, so thank goodness and touch wood, may it continue. Uh, the safety is superb. Uh, amazing. Uh, thank you so much for uh, all the questions. Thank you so much, Vivian. That was really an amazing campus tour. And for all the participants, if you missed any of these sessions, if you missed, for example, the UK visa session, you will be able to watch it right after this session. Join us also for coffee and chat tomorrow at 12 p.m. And have a nice evening or have a nice day for all of you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.